So the advancements that we've had in machine learning, AI, as we like to call it nowadays, because of things like large language models is really quite amazing. But you and me probably agree that there seems to be a bit too much hype. In fact, uh, some people are even recording how many times the word AI is being mentioned in any major keynote from you know any of the major tech companies, how many AIs per minute, because it's just AI here, AI there. And sometimes you can think, oh, just leave me alone with all this AI stuff. But in this video, what I wanna do is cut through some of the hype dig a little bit deeper and actually look at some real world use cases where large language models and specially trained models are actually really having a real world effect that will make our lives better beyond asking the latest chatbot to write you a poem about your about your pets or something like that or reply to an email real world stuff will actually make a real difference so if you want to find out more please let me explain now, Google recently published an article with 185 real world Gen AI use cases. Now, I've been through that whole list and I've picked out my favorite 10. We're going to be covering sports, business, productivity, medical, uh, and so on. Let's start by looking at a couple of sports examples. Sports, of course, is something that is uh, important to many people and it's a nice, easy introduction. For example, Formula E Racing are now able to take two hours of commentary and condense it down into a couple of minutes podcast, including relevant driver data and context for the whole season. So if you didn't have the time or you're unable to watch an entire race, you can get that now shrunk down into a two minute podcast. So that's both useful because it's reducing the time and also it's interesting because this is where uh, AI large language models are so good. It's able to summarize all of that information and bring it down into something much smaller. Likewise, the English Football Association are training models on all of their historical data to try to improve recruitment and talent development for future generations. If you've ever seen that film Moneyball with Brad Pitt, it talks about how statistics really can define what certain players, teams, strategies, configurations can do for the benefit of a team. In a similar way, Major League Baseball is taking all of that historical data that's got and it's incorporating it into its stat car system and then using AI models, it's able to extract interesting information relevant to the current games that are being played and also for a wider context. And that's available to both consumers who subscribe to that stat car system and to the broadcasters so they can have at their fingertips really interesting statistics about all those different numbers that they have related to uh, baseball. Now that was sports, but another big area, of course, for generative AI is medicine. So BenchSci, for example, are able to use generative AI to bring out connections and look at the correlations between different things in its biological uh, research, saving them both time and money and getting medicines to patients much, much quicker. In a similar way, Dasher, that's a Brazilian medical provider, is able to use generative AI to spot connections and the results from tests to see if there are any strange results and get that data directly to the physician who can then directly pass it on to the patient. So real world patients are actually getting information quicker and hopefully spotting different strange anomalies in their results much, much quicker because of the use of generative AI. Now turning to business, of course, it's a big area in business and productivity. Uh, in business, Augment is a company that's creating a, a system that allows generative AI to tie together all of your calendar, your notes, your emails, and all that kind of thing, so that you can get access to specific information very, very quickly. And then that means if you've got information at your fingertips, that produces a better business. And another interesting one is the US Patent Office. Now, of course, Patents are a very, very complicated field. There's lots and lots of patents that have been filed. There's a whole problem of prior art. And, you know, did someone else already use this? Now, of course, you have to have, you know, knowledge of the area that you're looking into, but also there's just so much to search. Now, searching, traditional searching, keyword searching, 
offers something and that's what we've uh, been using up to now all of us you know with google search but if you've been able to get a, a model that's trained on all app uh, applications all patent applications and then find connections between them that and then bring that information forward then that really helps the whole patent application process so the patent office are using ai to make that easier now, Tabia has invented a system called Compass, which helps find jobs for unemployed young people. And so it's an AI system that interacts using a, a voice interface with a prospective job seeker, enabling them to hone down the types of jobs they're looking for. And then using an AI model, it's able to look at what's available. You know, and of course, salary and distance and skill set are all going to be mixed into that. And the important thing is to get people into work quickly. Now, another interesting one, this time in the domain of science and agriculture, is a system called Climate Field View, which allows all the data about a field. So thinking about, you know, what fertilizer have been used, you know, what type of soil it is, acidity, rainfall, and of course the crop, the crop yield, the density, all that stuff that's involved in agriculture, that can all be taken together and then give uh, farmers and agricultural specialists a great insight into what's producing where, how to fix it, and so on. So bringing technology even further, of course, field science has been around for many, many years, bringing that to the next level now using AI models. And the last one of my 10 is the Asteroid Institute. So of course, if you think about the number of objects there are in the night sky, you know, it's a lot. And so when there are moving objects, asteroids, they can be hard to track, they can be hard to spot the patterns of. So the Asteroid Institute is using all of that data, feeding it into uh, AI models, and then they're able to find previously unrecognized asteroids, they're able to work on trajectories and all that kind of stuff. So that in itself is, again, that classic thing, so much data and a way of spotting connections and a way of summarizing that data that improves our lives. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments about your real world experiences with AI beyond just using ChatGPT or whatever is your favorite bot. Something that's actually making a real world good impact. AI for good, as it were. Love to hear from you in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.